Let's move on to North America and look at some of these players. Space Station Gaming versus E United, two of the stronger teams here in North America. Both of them went to LAN. One of them won the world frickin' championships last year. That's E United. Now as we look towards Space Station Gaming, this is a team that I've been really high on in this season. I think Barracuda and Jeff Hinla have the best team that they've had around them since Tully. They won the World Championship in Season 1. LAN and the online is totally different beasts, and for Space Station Gaming, they can do both. That's what makes them so strong. They came off strong against E United in Week 1 against this in the spring split rather where they found the 2-0 victory but then once united come came back online once they shook off those cobwebs they were the ones that found the victory in week six so it's surprise it's going to be interesting to see this matchup i'm actually going to disagree with you there we didn't see them at land and that was a really big letdown for me personally and i think a lot of fans at home space station wasn't able to really transition into land and when you looked at them and i spoke to jeff hinla he said look we just didn't play well we didn't play ourselves and so I actually put a video out this on my own channel. I said, look, this is this play at land was so un uncharacteristic of Space Station that it's an almost who it's a who cares. This was a really big flop for them, but I don't think it's indicative of the strength. One of the positives, I'm very glad this is the replay we're coming out to. One of the positives of this land was Aquarius. Aquaman stepped up. He was very confident in the interviews. He, You could just tell how happy he was during some of them. And that's very refreshing to see. You know, one of the newer LAN experienced players, despite of all the experience that he has online, like I mentioned, it's a different beast and an entity. And he stepped up, he performed. But the problem was there was a roadblock. And that roadblock was all of Europe for <laughs> Space Station Gaming and e United. Yeah, a lot of what was being paid attention to was the compositions of the teams. Baskin has been playing a lot of Hunters and thus North America has focused on the double hunter for going the mid lane mage. Europe obviously has been paying a lot of attention to the mid lane mage, and thus the Europeans wound up winning. One of the questions they asked on Esports Weekly was, do you think that the LAN, was the European meta just correct or, or better, or was the gameplay just better? Would Double Hunter still work, etc.? I think Double Hunter definitely works. I think that just the gameplay in itself, Europe was more patient than North America, and North America played into Europe's strengths. There were a lot of offensive plays that Baskin did when he went to Hunter in the mid lane, but with all the picks that they got, they still couldn't find the victories, despite all the objectives that they had because of the defense, the solid defense that Europe had. So it's a little bit of column A, column B. I do think that the mid, mid lane mage is a little bit better most of the time, but the hunter, the hunter can dance if that's what you want to yes. do. It just, I think the European teams are just a little bit better. Just better at holding the objectives and not losing a lot of their phoenixes. EU won in the spring and EU won at world championships, sort of. The North American team, E United, are your defending world champions. And as they come into the spring split, they came in a little bit slow. They picked it up, and at land, they were not able to convert. But Panda Cat, Polar Bear Mike, Venenu, Scream, and Benji certainly looking to turn things around here in the summer split. And this is going to be the best test for them. When they started off slow with the spring split, they faced off against Space Station Gaming, losing that matchup 2 to nothing. This is their time to show not only ourselves here in the commentating slash analyst booth or the fans at home, but to themselves if they can start off strong and actually carry that into the land and then just show us that they can win more than just one land. Benji's always been a big deal for this team. So, I mean, watching him right now, not a really big surprise as far as what this squad is able to do. I think a lot of it does come from Benji. But I think we'd be remiss to not mention Scream, who's been a very, very big deal. The other players, sure, Polar Bear Mike, Hunter, and mid lane, fine. But I've been looking at the right side of the map. I've been looking at the short side of the map. The jungle solo synergy between Scream and Benji is a really big part of what United wants to do. Benji wants to play aggressive, so does Scream. And I think that's going to work out well against Space Station Gaming because if you can shut down Anister and whatever Aquarius wants to bring to the table, that could shut down a lot of the momentum from Space Station and what they want to bring to the table of this very first set. It's a really, really good point. Let's get into picks and bans for game number one here. It's going to be Space Station versus E United. Excited to see what the meta brings to North Americans because Europe is clearly favoring out the Athena. So I, I really like the point that you made about uh, about the jungle because Andenster <clears throat> unfortunately hasn't been there. 
I was the biggest proponent of Andy coming back into the jungle. I thought it was a very big deal. And and to an extent, I think that it's still possible. Keep in mind, Anister took a whole year off of playing the jungle position, sure. which is arguably the toughest position to come into after a hiatus. A brand new map, brand new meta. There are a lot of excuses, and I'm lining them up for Anister, not because I'm his boy, but because I really and truly think that Anister has what it takes to be a transcendent jungler in Season 5, but he's got to do it now because he's been i mean inconsistent is the word i'm not gonna make any excuses for him obviously but it's definitely been a situation where there's been more light being shined elsewhere where sure. baskin is stepping up so it makes it look like Anister's not doing as much as he possibly can and that takes a lot of weight off of his shoulders to still do the basic fundamentals that a jungler needs to do. If he could still play counterintuitive and look for the counter plays once their lane's gonna get ganked, then he's still doing his job and That's then right. let the team fights just naturally unfold. E United starting the draft off hot with the Guan Yu flavor of the week. Giannis and Hachi Man, the selection for SSG. And Ho Yi and Thoth will be selected by E United. No Athena, Terra, Serket, or Shibalanke. I think these are very standard bands in this sort of world. And look at the picks as well. Space Station Gaming looking to round out their first half of the draft. And with the Odin, he's going to feast on eyeballs and That's very entrails. grotesque. Wow. That yes. is, I've that, never listened to that. That war cry, if I heard that across the battlefield, I'm like, I'm just going to go home now. I, I'm, I'm good. Don't eat my eyeballs. Yeah, I'm good on that. That's the raven. That's the big, what the raven does. The biggest point, though, is that Odin is going to be eating horses for dinner right here. Guan Yu locked in the cage is devastating. It sucks that it shuts off the heel, but trapping Guan in the cage has been one of the oldest tricks to yep. controlling Guan Yu. And just another addition to the thought, yeah. trying to lock down any guy that doesn't have that natural leap mechanic or disjoint mechanic. So you're gonna be forced into at least one phantom, if not two. I love the bands coming from Space Station Gaming. Uh, with the jungle position still open, I think Nemesis is a very obvious ban, but the Mercury a little bit less so. Mercury here of late has been very successful, specifically in the hands of Scream. So I, I like this choice from SSG to sort of take that one away. I'm surprised that with an Odin selected, that they actually just ban away the Dash characters anyway. I would almost want to play against a Nemesis or a Mercury if I have an Odin cage available. Here's the thing, is that Nemesis and Mercury can still do the things when they're stuck up in the ring. Nemesis Ultimate, if Nem ults and dies, that's fine. You've already done your thing. Go ahead. Hopefully you get a slice and dice off as well. Mercury, if he's trapped in the cage, that, that, that's a that, that's a Rorschach moment. You're trapped in there with him. Mercury's just going to crit you in the face. It gets to that six, game, <laughs> a six item slot, that's true. But keep in mind, the damage on the flip side, one Giannis Unstable Vortex will just melt the Mercury. So as long as those abilities are being thrown at the cage, I don't care how much damage you do, <laughs> you're going to die before you get off your damage. Susana will be the choice for Scream, another one that he likes to go to. But Hercules in the hands of Aquarius. I mentioned before that one of the positives, the few positives, that Space Station Gaming had at LAN was that Aquarius stepped up. The beginning of the LAN and the beginning of the Spring Split, Aquarius was getting a lot of characters that would neutralize the lane. Uh, the Ardeos, a lot of Odin, just like sit back and do your thing. Then as Aquarius stepped up and sort of became a superstar in his own right in that land, Hercules started being given to him, and he was able to carry. Now, the question I asked you, Tolly, is will Aquarius' as Hercules be enough for Space Station Gaming to beat E United? With this composition, it's dependent on the early game. If they don't get off to a great early game start, they're going to falter in the late game. The damage from the Thoth, too much range, I think, that Space Station mm. Gaming can have to worry about, considering that they have three physical frontliners and they need to get super close to both the Thoth and the Huyi. The Mark of the Golden Crow should be enough late game damage for United. I got excited. I thought we were going to see a Herc jungle. I doubt that. Player to watch before we go to the game. Uh, it's definitely going to be Baskin on the Giannis. Got to keep an eye on Baskin. Right now, we've got the game coming to you. It's Hindo, and it's Taco. Thanks so much, Hefta. And honestly, Taco, it's the battle of the Warriors in the support role. We just saw Athena earlier on. Guardian still being very good, even in the solo lane. 
But now it's back to warrior supports are creeping in. Guan Yu, uh, Odin. Uh, some heavy value, I think, towards a lot of that early clear potential in the duel. And we saw a whole lot of contests happening at the LAN, especially mm. where teams are constantly trying to look for that purple buff, red buff invade. I think that this is just a, a strong way to try and deter the other side from looking towards your buffs, knowing that both ends are going to be relatively even in terms of establishing the lane pressure dominance. Just like Spring Split, it's the best of three. So get your vote in now in Mixer Chat on who you think will win game one. E United versus Space Station, two of the arguably best teams in North America. At least they were in spring split. But coming into summer, we'll see how things fare. It's going to be a hard one to call. I think that the competition's only getting tighter as time goes on. I mean, even towards the end, heading into the Masters land, a bit of a toss-up still it for did, a yeah. lot of these teams from both Europe and North America. Really, really was. Let's get into game then and see how this one begins. I do want to check if that Guan Yu is in the support role, which I expect it to be. It will be. Polar Bear Mike Pilot in that one. It could have been the Kukulun, but then can you really take Kukulun away from Benji? I wouldn't want to, is, is the better way to put it. I mean, this skin was legitimately made because of Benji. So so oh. you gotta oh. stick to your guns. Scream behind you, buddy. Driving strike available. He's trying to hold it for the last hit to make sure. Is he even going to hold that? Very risky plays there between the two. But Aquarius will come up with the buff and deny it from Scream in the jungle. And now he teleports to tower free because Susano has no way to interrupt that teleport from happening. Considering level one, you don't expect that sort of invade. It's a risk first reward situation. So he should pretty much hit level two off this and we'll do so. A couple of creeps to spare. And he's over there for the blue buff too. So a big lead for Aquarius in the solo lane of the early stages of this game. And level two is going to be ticked now for Anon, sir. This is where things get a little bit more complicated for Scream in that he's still sitting at level one. He can't really afford to try and contest either side of those left, right, mid harpies. He's going to have to really rely on Venenu if they want to have any sort of steal potential on those. Love the respects of the duo like from Space Station there early on. And Space Station was 75% of the fan vote here. Obviously, though, Odin Hachiman level one's not the greatest in the world, Taco, but level two, they start to come into play. Level two everything you're looking for. Speaking Ooh. of which, Baskin already claiming Scream's Purification Beads pretty early on here. And that was after the Unstable Vortex had already been expended. And also on top of the fact the speed buff was already taken as well. So now Scream's going to have to play this very carefully in the early stages. I expect Anon to look to try and go aggressive more in the jungle now, potentially. Start to invade some camps, keep the pressure on. I think that's why we even saw that portal, portal? place just yeah. then, because that was Baskin kind of alluding to the thought of maybe he's going to go and actually try and contest those harpies. Venenu poked out to sitting at half health, wouldn't really be able to provide much assistance towards Scream. Build-wise, nothing to too crazy whatsoever. Although we do see a bit of a difference in the supports this game. Most of the time, Taco, we saw a lot of rushes of the Heavenly Agility, the upgraded version, to give you the Fatalis effect that we've seen before. This game, though, supports investing in boots earlier on. I think this is just a direct result of not being able to necessarily afford the same leisure as a Guardian with that sprint That's fair. in comparison to the Warrior. Warriors with the sprint, sure, there's a lot of base damage to be had there, but you might need a little bit of mobility. Oh, nice little cancel from Barracuda there in the Aijutsu with the bird bomb following up from Jeff. Polar Bear Mike ate a bit of damage, but at level three, he will be able to sustain back up sooner rather than later. Plenty of potions and inventory too. Bear kind of dancing with death there, he if was. you think about it, because that's probably not a play that he chooses to make throughout the later stages of the match. It's one that he knows he can afford to do because of the fact that everybody's only level three. But sure. Jeff and Barra clearly trying to make sure that the wave pressure still stays in their favor. They could have easily contested that purple buff secure against E United, but they just want to ensure that they're getting as much farm as possible out of the lane as is. But then now level four has his Baskin in the mid lane, and Baskin will have the advantage for these left hand harpies. Unstable Vortex is going to have to be good here. But then on the rotation, bit of a contest between the two. And it looks like that might have gone one for one. Actually, no, Benenu comes up big. He's level five, Baskin. Still at level four. Bit surprised that Baskin wouldn't try to reset those. Seems a, a little stubborn, if you ask me, that he'd still try to secure those over the Thoth. And that's always usually going to go in favor of the Thoth every time. Let, three minutes in the game, though, you just quite fine for both these two teams in regards to what happened with Aquarius at the start of this game too. It wasn't that big of a deal with him getting that lead earlier on. There's been no first blood. The experience is in Space Station's favor, but it's not enough to call it over whatsoever. Panda Cat and Polar Bear Mike going to just keep farming up on this left-hand side. The big deal though is Scream trying to hit level 5 where Aninster has already found that. And Space Station also have the timer of that speed buff available for them, so what's the keep 
Aquarius for maybe looking for that. Not necessarily on that past spawn, because that one's just really hard to keep track of for anybody. But I, I think in the future buff spawns, Aquarius still knows that the general time period of which that buff was taken. And I can assure you, he's definitely still keeping track of it. Sure. And at the same time, space and time will be available. Also, Baskin, I'm sorry, Anister may look to invade on that too. That speed buff is due up relatively soon. So keep an eye to see what happens with Space Station. And if they do look to group at the moment, however, and this is just going to head back into his own half of the map. Slow it down, says the baseball. Benji will survive. It did cost him his ultimate there too. Transformation comes out. Benji will survive. But his TP is on cooldown, which is quite important here. And the query is just taking his time about things. Wants to maybe force Benji to push up a little bit here. Kind of just sitting it out, waiting for that transformation to wear off, and then we'll probably start to see some more pressuring out of Aquarius. And I'm surprised that Benji is still willing to play up as far as he is. Yeah, you can talk about the aggression as well, because you see Scream actually had to go back to base again there. Did he finish off his full boots? He did. Didn't work out too bad for Scream, because he managed to get his speed, hit level five, and get his full boots on, because for a moment, Aninster did have a boot advantage with the Warrior Tabby versus just a tier two, but it's not big enough yet. He is level six, however, is the space station chunk. And Scream knows that too, which is why as soon as he gets the gold available, he immediately backs to finish off those boots. And uh, the power just makes so much of a difference here. And this is part of the reason why Purification Beads are forced out off of a nice portal from Baskin. Beautiful pickup of Jeff Hindler there. They saw him bird bomb tackle. And after that, they're like, well, he's going to escape. But neither does Scream. And Insta turns up with a space and time to follow suit. Ult for ults in the mid laners. And, well, one support for one jungler. I know who I'd be favoring there. An eye for an eye, though. Either way, you break it down. Space Station, of course, probably a little bit more favored in that trade, though, just because of the fact that it was Jeff who ends up falling. But that could also actually end up working against them because you don't want your warrior support to be one of the early casualties. You kind of need that warrior to start scaling pretty heavily. I mean, that's the whole purpose of picking them is to sure. have that uh, established pressure because they're base scaling is so nice and without it if you fall behind early on you're not going to be looking to initiate anything and the one thing about Noden, he plays very similar to an Ares even though the Guardian versus Warrior if they're ahead they're in a strong position if they start to slip behind it starts to become more of a struggle for them to make an impact in the team fights and that was a beautiful example too of what F was bringing up on the desk even where you're kind of locked in here with me and, yeah. and that screen still looks to go in despite that ring having been used out of Jafinla and I think that that just shows E United are certainly A-OK -okay with taking a brawl inside of that cave yeah especially a Susano as well very ability based in terms of assassins as well so he's not going to worry about attack speed reduction for the most part. Benji versus Aquarius still batting away. Is Aquarius more focused on Benji than he is on those minions? Uh, Breaker just off the mark, but still dealt a little bit of damage for the time being. E United with the gold lead. They found the first blood. The experience still marginally in Space Station's favor. Not by much, though. It's still just enough to where you can say, yeah, we're ahead, but not enough to where they can comfortably sit back and think that this game's a, a sealed deal here. Scream now trying to help out Benji a little bit, alleviates him with this pressure. No, he's going straight for blood. Oh, and a boulder off the wall connects to Scream. One more hit would do, but Scream's going to live. Barry, some amount of health. Benji was trying to bring down Aquarius too, but Aquarius just takes it. I'm on in a 2v1 and comes out no worse for wear. Benji will be able to secure his blue buff, thankfully, that Aquarius not quite healthy enough to look to contest this one. However, Scream being forced to back is just so much in favor of Aninsur here in that he's going to be able to keep reliably farming. Speaking of which, he's going in straight on to Panda Cat. Aegis has been used. Good Aegis from Panda Cat. That just saves it, but it costs a blink. And the ultimate of Aninsur. Turnaround play could be here. He united on the rotation. Going to be here a little bit too late to do anything. But as we said, Aegis down. It, it's just so telling, though. You know for a fact that... That is all Space Station wanted. It, it's a nice consolation prize as a Robin jungle to be able to force the active because as soon as that ultimate's available again, you can kind of expect the Anister to just lurk that duo lane nonstop. The whole time, if you can see a window for it. He's in mid lane right now alongside Scream, just found up some more. Duo lane still going at it. And Venenu poking Baskin back. Both of them working towards a Kronos pendant here as well. Tough, we don't normally see too many Kronos pendants. It is viable, Taco, but most of the time, you love the Book of Tough of the Warlock staff. We oh. all know this is the classic Rada to Hootie Rush. That's about to come. Is happen. that what it is? No, I don't <laughs> I highly doubt that Venenu would I ever do that. I was just in you. You're the I, I mean, it happens very rarely. It's been quite some time, I, I think. Most mid laners uh, would choose not to build that item second. If anything, it'll be no. the Soul Reaver. 
but not in this case. It can't be a Soul Reaver because of the build path we've gone through here. Eight for Panda Cat. He's working on his stacks. His stack lead is actually a little bit better than that of Barracuda's as it stands at the moment. It's not big momentum shift, really, Taco, but once you get that item finished, you do get a bit of a lead for a moment. I think that's also just Vera hasn't been solo farming the waves nearly as often as Panda Cat. PBM has kind of just been lurking around a lot of these jungle corridors, kind of checking to make sure that Venenu is okay in mid and that Panda Cat's not falling too far behind in duo. We've already seen some aggression out of Space Station in, in either side lane, so E United certainly still on the defensive. Love what we saw at Aquarius there. He was trying to proxy between the Tier 1 and Tier 2 tower, but Benji was well aware that's what Aquarius was looking to do. So by forcing him into the lane and not allowing him to proxy, it means Benji can secure his own blue buff. Aquarius has to surrender the opportunity of getting that and won't be able to push that wave into the tower. Screen, though, going to take a bit of punishment for his troubles. Level 9 now. The doom of the early game have kind of worn off the Scream now, and it's almost an even game. I'm just waiting for the first anti-heal item oh, to be picked up. It is one of two three. Oh my god, I was trolling. So let's like, talk about this and why we're you know, discussing like, it's not an item we normally see, especially as a first item. We never used to see it in the old days, Taco, but nowadays it kind of took a bit of a fall. It's a lot of power. Okay, in all fairness, I think that this occurs because you're looking for the targets below 50% health as right. Thoth. You have a lot of range. This is looking for the kill confirmations and the secures. And United, when you break it all down, they actually have a pretty nice draft as far as poking players out and poking out of their gods. I think that their draft is a little bit better suited towards the counter initiation. I don't think we'll ever really see United trying to start up a fight themselves unless it's going to be riding off of the back of Scream. But uh, Venenu's sole purpose in life here, especially now that he's got this Rata Tahuti pickup, is play behind everybody else and make sure you hit it. Make sure you hit him. 150 power is the big talking point as well because most of the mage items full full stacked, or well, most of the time full stacked, or like full complete item is about 100 power on an item. This is that plus half the amount of, as well. So it's 150 power that's on this. It's going to be swinging. Obviously, the passive does come into play now and again, but they have to be below half health before it really does. I'm starting to think there's a actually something to it with this caster's curse, by the way. Right, because you it, keep saying stuff? Off, it started off with the Dignitas thing, and I was like, there's no way this team possibly well, loses. The longer, then, you, the longer you cast, the safer you'll become, where you just don't make those predictions, because whenever you do, they're generally wrong. I, see, look at me now. See, I can, I can I now was, make predictions, and I'm correct. I'll like, be honest, I just well, wanted to disagree with you. That's fair. And somehow it worked out. There you go. That's what happens in the time. thing from the future. No goal period attempts so far between these two teams. You know, with that little bit of a lead just down to that first blood, there's been no other real kills between the two as it stands. It's all focused on farming. It's almost getting to that point, like a one big team fight, and this could open up. Did you see those graphs, though? Yeah. It's just like, a, like an EKG, pretty much. It's everything dead even, just back and forth, back and forth, never really having a, a slight edge over the other. Even a 1,000 gold lead, I think, would uh, have been expected by this point, but these two teams are just doing such a great job staying on top of every single one of their buff timers. They're not really giving any sort of windows of opportunity for uh, the opposite to try and jump into the mix. Might could be in a bit of trouble here. One down to Ward, but Andy won't be there on the rotation in time. But Space Station, four men strong. Going to group up and pull the Gold Fury. Reset for a second, though. A screen jumps away from Anninster. And Jeff Henler was on the zone duty. Gold Fury did get reset again. Now start up once more. I don't want to see Space Station pick up a fight, though, unless they fully leash that Gold Fury because Jeff Henler's cage cannot be broken. Here we go. Jeff Henler's cage is down and Polar Bear Mike's trapped inside. Drops up here soon and gets a good stun off, too. Still under pressure. Polar Bear Mike, but duking away from Aquarius. And it's and Barracuda both getting low, and Barracuda gets picked off by Venenu. And it's not over just yet. Aquarius has jumped in now, but it's a little bit too little too late. He's not going to be able to find anybody in the back end. Still looking to kind of just break the members of United away from each other. But so far, all he's going to mean is Benji. And these two have been added since the start of the game. We all know how this one ends. Yeah, then none of those two will die whatsoever. But Barracuda being dead is a big swing here in United's favor. They start to head back towards the Gold Fury pit. I, I like the mentality of the Odin selection here to respond to the Guan Yu. But you need damage inside of that ring. And for Space Station, it just clearly was not there. They couldn't even finish off Polar Bear Mike. And also, I think that was just such a beautiful response out of EU United to make sure that they were aggressing on the outside of the cage to try and keep PBM safe. Can we know is Venenu? Just keep an eye on the amount of damage he's ticking up at the moment. He's at 4,000 so far. That last team fight. That, that, that runner to who he's swinging. It really is. And we haven't seen too much OE, but I think that Panicat goes for it in this 
draft because he wants to be able to drop that Sunbreaker inside of the Odin cage. A lot of the members from Space Station, they're mainly based warriors that have to be up close and personal if they want to deal their damage. And it's hard for Space Station to try and confirm kills inside of the Odin ring when they know they have to take plenty of damage in response. And Panda Cat going for the Ick foul here as well. An item that's come back into fruition as time's gone on. Normally we see that when you're behind Taco, but I wouldn't say he's behind here. He's just looking to fight. It can kind of go either way, though. With the uh, Ikavol, if you're ahead, it's a bit of a win more item in that it's certainly not going to cost you the lane by any means. You're still going to be able to bully out your lane opponent. It's It's got really nice benefits for being such a cheap bridge item. But for Barracuda, since he's opting towards the crit, in which what I'm assuming is going to be a Poison Star, just because that's the most standard uh, third item crit that it's picked up because of the 20% slow, and also the um, it's the damage mitigation, the damage reduction, that's yeah, sure. very important as well. And United, they've got plenty of damage. They do, especially with Veneno in that mid lane now. Still building away. Looks like he, he's got to be Kronos Pedder next, right? I mean, he's already got Rodder to Hui. And there's no other options here. Imagine if he could buy two Rods just I, to do it. I think if you could, I think all players would just buy Rod, 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 well, Rod, if Rod. Well, if you could repeat items, we would never see anything else other than, like, the same two or three. What would be the item for Hunters? What for would Hunters? You, what would you buy? Deathbringer? Uh, I mean, there's actually a few for Hunters. Boots? I take that back. No, it's, like, Devo Gloves, and then there's also Crit items. Okay. I think that Wind Demon's actually pretty insane. Well, six, what it's worth. six wind demons could be pretty useful. You wouldn't need boots then because of all the mobility you're going to get. Sounds out. more like a build for Mercury than anybody else. Fair. Can fair you imagine indeed. like four Ikevals though at like 10 minutes into a game? Could you get four Ikevals in 10 minutes in the game now? It's I pretty cheap, 1,700 gold. That's still a lot of gold in 10 minutes. Yeah, but if you get two of them, you're probably getting enough gold for a third, fourth, and fifth. Listen, all I know is that people have to stand still for you to hit him because you can't chase him with no boots. That's all I'm saying there. Same issues Ratatoska has. Barracuda in the jungle trying to get his own purple now. Panicat already took his down. Plenty of war coverage on this left-hand side from Space Station. That goal for you he hasn't gone down yet, even though it's been tasted by both teams, but not consumed. I do think it's interesting, though, that Barracuda, despite being against the Ho'i, is still opting to go primarily into crit. A lot of times we'll see Hunters kind of stray away from crit against the Ho'i, and, and Unite is running double warrior. So early game, probably not getting as much benefit from the crit, but I, I think Bear is mostly looking towards that damage reduction for the rest of his team. Well, you know, trying to burst the goal fury down before Baskin can say anything about it. He's already dead and off the map space and time not even fired. Aquarius turns up with a teleport, gets a good driving strike off of him, Scream, tries the body block, but the sprint will get him out of danger. No one from Space Station able to follow up. He united with the first win of the game. To see United ripping the rug right out from underneath Space Station. They were not expecting that Gold Fury to drop so quickly. And, well, they certainly can't be caught sleeping on the Pyromancer. I think that's why we're starting to see this grouping occur. Space Station already lost one objective, not looking to give up any others. Oh, and with Barracuda sitting on the left-hand side here, I thought United might be looking at the Pyromancer. But Pandaka on his way back to lane, and he doesn't know when he's waiting in the jungle here. And this is Blink is available. Blink in, punch to the back of the head, gonna force out the leap, and he won't use his ultimate this time round though. He will buy enough time for Barracuda to get that tier one tower. And that's all they ever wanted to begin with. Strong response makes up for, I, I think, a decent amount of what they lost in the Gold Fury, because while Space Station, sure, it sucks to lose Gold Fury because well, that was the big objective for the early game, but the map pressure now is a little bit in Space Station's favor because Barracuda will be free to rotate, unlike Pandacat, who might want to stay a, a little bit more confined to the dual lane to try and return the tower. And Pandacat as well, going towards the execution more than likely next, whereas Barracuda has that Poison Star online. Got to take into account those crits, Taco. You're going to be on a lucky day for the crits, but if they do come into play, they can cause a lot of problems for some of the squishier members of the United. And of course... I still firmly believe that this is an item selection choice Barra chooses to go into because he wants to apply a slow and he wants some of that damage reduction to occur. I think that we're mostly going to be seeing Space Station try and, and focus out Venenu once the actual team fights break out. So this is going to be heavy positioning awareness mm. out of Venenu. He, he really can't afford to be even the slightest bit away from the rest of his team. Otherwise, Space Station will have the burst available to just take him out. Credit where it's due to Polar Bear Mike, though. Level 14 to Jeff Hindler's level 12 in the support role here. Has picked up the Phantom now to make sure his team can escape that ring. And when that Phantom does get upgraded, it is a big damage reduction tool, which is something that's actually really good against a lot of the members of Space Station. But they only have the one. Mm -hmm. And sure, 
sure, having that 10% damage reduction is going to be nice when it is upgraded, but you, you have to I, make it there. You only really need to protect Veneno, I feel, though, with that Phantom. The Phantom's there for Veneno. The rest of them can either survive with enough mobility Ideally, or escape themselves. But a, a good Odin, and I, I think that we can expect to see sure. this out of Jeff, too. He'll He's going to wait for the escapes. Well, Benji going to get hit by the pole and the unstable, but not a whole lot of damage. Nice Earthbreaker from Aquarius <laughs> at the tail end of the Salmon Leap, but it's not enough to get a kill. The United starts to put some pressure towards the mid lane a little bit more now. And Benji may have been off a bit too much here. If he gets caught in the jungle, there's a big rotation coming. Baskin smelt it out, got the slow up from the threshold. Blink down on Benji, Aquarius and Andy coming in with the blink of the road. And Aquarius, he's still looking to catch up for more. And Jeff Finley going to drop the cage just to make sure that Benji stays inside of it. Through space and time going to be used as well, but this controlling isn't dead. Phantom has been used, but it wasn't really needed towards the end of it. And it's down to half health. Venenu did manage to get the Aegis out of Bask in there, I believe, as well. A Scream eats the unstable Vortex. No more kills are going to come from this, though. No kills, in fact. Aegis was consumed by Baskin, which was a very big... Aegis at the end of the day, because Venony was on target. The response time, though, from E United, they knew right away, as soon as Benji had pulled away from the Harpies, that he was going to be pursued by the entirety of Space Station. And the amount of peel that just occurred to keep Benji safe and sound is pretty impressive stuff. So Pyromancer doesn't get dropped there. He's going to be looked at again by PBM and E United after they clear out the wards. Jeff is hanging around and Giannis in base. No space and time just yet, but it should be up relatively soon, especially with that Chronos pen and ticking away. Aquarius Jeff show up and that's going to force E United off. Still pressure in the mid lane though. There's Benji and Scream hanging around, making sure Anis they can't rotate. Aquarius still trying to make sure that e United are forced to reset this, but he's going to go Big ahead and heel. pop his thorns as well. It might not matter, though. Guan Yu to the rescue, though. Stuns him in place by dismounting Polar Bear Mike. Sets up Veneni for an easy pickings onto the Hercules. Without the Hercules, Space Station can only watch United take the pyro. And oh my, oh my, are they going for the fire? Well, Jeff is just back in, and he realizes it now. And there's almost nothing, I think, that Space Station can do about it. They're going to look for the possible steals, but if it's a war of attrition, that's going to be one that United should win because they've got Polar Bear Mike on the Guan Yu, and the heals are forever. Ring down to slow down Panda Cat's attack speed, but Jeff is getting very low, and they're all waiting for him. Panda Cat will dive in to pick up the kill. Barracuda was trying to help out, gets picked up by Panda Cat too. Andy and Baskin in too late. Don't find the unstable Vortex either. Baskin's out. However, triple kill for Panda Cat, but he will see Scream fall in his wake. Well, there's only one member left alive, and it's Baskin. And he's going to clear out the wave in mid, but United, they don't even need it. They can siege with or without those creeps because PVM, he's got the heals for days. So what happened there, Taka? What exactly went wrong? I mean, Gorpio was down for a while. They rotate right. They do pyro. Space Station used everything, and they weren't able to find a kill. E United don't need their ultimates to fight. That is the huge difference here, I think, between Space Station and E United, is that Space Station don't have a as much reliable poke damage as E United. And because of that, well, it's just too easy for Vanayan to continue poking people out, and anybody who happens to fall low on E United just gets healed right back up because they go on you. And look at the growth of those graphs. If you think about it, about 17 minutes in is where you saw that first Gold Fury. We had a bit of downtime for a while, then Pyro, Fire Giant, Gold Fury. And the worst thing is, is the Fire Giant because with that round their waist now for a few more minutes, they can start to take down some of these towers. This feels like the experimental game for Space Station in that they wanted to see what would happen if they gave up the Guan Yu for mm -hmm. E United because there's no way that's being an, an oversighted pick. I, I definitely think that Space Station were fully accepting that Odin would be the answer that they needed. I do like the Odin pickup here. I, I'm not completely sold uh, of Jeff Odin's support, but I think that this is also just a much more difficult game for Jeff because of the fact that there just simply isn't any AoE damage to follow up from that ring. Yeah, it's been a rough one so far from Space Station. It's just not found a window. Aquarius, at the start of the game, got off to a great start for himself and his team, but the rest of the team just not been able to do anything. And they kind of focused dually quite a lot of this game and didn't really find as much as he wanted to. Panda Cat played it very well for the most part, which has allowed E United to keep pressure up now and start to look for some of these towers. And I know we saw a lot out of Barracuda at the land, but I feel as though he's been unable to do anything here, really, or, or have a, an impact because of all the range E United just have so much mobility too that it's very difficult to keep track of them. Big pick on Scream on the right hand side, screaming a lot of trouble. Trying to get away from Anninster as Baskin and Jeff Hindler joining. Sprint has been used. 
Basking will come through the portal, but a great blink from Scream puts him safe. And now Scream's going to go back in to deny the backs. He's denying the backs on purpose, making sure his team can get a Phoenix for free. Aquarius and Barracuda, they can't stop it on their own. Scream's still juking around in the ring. Well, he should probably die here. If he doesn't, this should is he? going to be super problematic. Aquarius was able to back in time, but Scream's still running in between his T1 and T2 towers. Unstable will connect this time around, and now Baskin. And Jeff Henley trying to get back to base. Anderson did manage to make it, though. But only in time to see this tier two being worked on. Aquarius may have to zone them away and will do so. Pulls Benji back in with a driving strike after the Earthbreaker. But Benji's still on his ultimate. The sun's rained down and Aquarius is getting very low. As Venenu with that rudder to who he first died and bursts him down from below half health. United are just putting in the work right now. Barracuda loses half of his this health is to Venenu. Doesn't even get a chance to move or fight. PBM going to make sure he stays stunned and dead. Well, in goes Andy, in goes Jeff, but Andy's all the way back out, not by choice. His Panacat hits him for 300. They could end the game off this. United are looking to potentially close this out. Baskin and Jeff have to defend, but Baskin gets hit, forces his beads and his Aegis. If Baskin falls, I tell you what, that could be game now. It is most certainly game now, and I think that Space Station know it. Surrender vote has come through, but it won't even be needed because brutal. United are going to close the game out before they even get the chance to F6. Taco, that was brutal. It's like Space Station haven't got off the flight home back from land just yet. Whereas the United are like, okay, yeah, we've been home in a couple of weeks. Uh, that hurt to watch. I, I'm right there with you the whole, whole nine yards, but I, I think that this really was a, an experimental draft out of Space Station in that they were trying to see what they can and can't get away with. You are never really too certain of how a god is going to perform after a recent buff or nerf, et cetera. And, and I, I think that it's okay to let them slip through. I don't, however, think that Space Station should allow the Guan Yu Just or the, the Thoth even. The, the Thoth as well, I think, was pretty problematic in uh, game one. You can't them all, though. You can't I, them all. It's, it's complicated. Who do you guys think was MVP in that game? Because for my money, there's quite a few potential options there. I mean, Polar Bear might have had a good game, so did Panda Cat. So did Venenu in the mid lane. I think Benji and Scream a little bit quiet at that game, but then Scream's plays towards the end. A lot of Scream was just building tank anyway. He kind of gave up on the on the concept of being the hard carry that game. He was ready to let his team have the spotlight, which I think, for what it's worth, was definitely the right decision to make. Who do you think was MVP, though? PBM. We'll find out if you guys at home choose PBM. Let's get over to the desk. It's Tom and Tolly standing by. Welcome back to the desk, folks. And I really like what Taco had to say there. Uh, the biggest the biggest takeaway from that one was this might have been the experimenting, the, the experimental phase. All right, Guan Yu is the hot man on campus right now. How hot is he? Can we control him with the Odin? Guess what? They can't. <laughs> nope, unfortunately not. And uh, Phantom was good enough to really deal with it. It wasn't just the Guan Yu and the Thoth that Taco alluded to at the cast. It was also the fact that it was Venenu's Thoth. He played lights out this game. It was also because the front line was creating that safety bubble that he needed to get the long range damage off. Yeah, you know, this has been uh, really interesting because I was, I was very slow on the Venenu train. A lot of people were saying, oh man, this guy is really, really great. And I, I, I didn't see it, right? And even, even with the world performance, I said, yes, he stepped up and he looked good, but is he really like this great? And after that performance in this game, earning MVP, and not this performance, but I mean, after all, everything is sort of lining up, I think Benaney has, has absolutely earned his right to be one of the top people when you talk about the mid lane. And like I said, maybe I'm a little slow on the uptick, but at this point in time, Nobody can deny Venenu. Since its inception under Team Allegiance back in Season 3, that squad wasn't the fit for him, unfortunately. I agree. But when he went to Oxygen Supremacy in Season 4, I think it was that spring gauntlet that he really showed the world, honestly, what he's truly capable of. And since then, he's been an absolute monster and almost unstoppable. He definitely found the right squad here in Season 5. What is it about him? I mean, is it is it the positioning? Is it the is it the target focus? I mean, what makes Venenu so strong? Well, he doesn't miss for the most part. <laughs> I don't see many missed off zones. The patience as well. That last siege, he dashed in, waited out the beads just in the nick of time to apply the stun. And yes, he's also very safe in the positioning. He listens to the call. He's disciplined. He's not going to go for the flashy plays. It just kind of happens. Perfect stuff coming out from Venenu. MVP for game number one. He and his team wind up taking the first victory. Space Station.